So it used to be, you know, close to 70 people per month contributing across all of the X-related code bases, not including the kernel. Um, and now it's actually down to less than half of that. Um, so, you know, at this point, I started thinking, like, I honestly had not realized that there might be a problem, but it, it seems to be the case, right? Because all, all the core people seem to still be around and fine, but there's got to be a lot of peripheral people who are having a harder time contributing or just aren't interested for some reason. Um, I mean, any thoughts on that one? Yeah. Maybe uh, everybody's just uh, kind of, since the emergence of Wayland, uh, people just say, like, well, XARC is a bit of a dead end, and uh, you know, might as well see what happens on Wayland. Yeah, that's, that's actually a great point. I so badly wanted to find time to do the same stuff for Wayland, and I just ran out. So if you're actually interested in doing that, I can throw it together afterwards. Um, and I'd, in fact, be really interested in seeing if, if, if Wayland is the magical cure, you know, from a community point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the question about it, but it's just the cool guys kind of go left mm -hmm. and everyone else walk away. Do you have like a, a skew measure for whether that's actually. Oh, happening? no. No, I didn't. So. The, the, the long tail is kind of shrinking and everything is aggravated. Right. It's actually, that data is on Olo. Like you can go look <laughs> on the contributors page on Olo. In fact, um, so I can pull it up as well, right? <coughs> So looking at the dates on the kernel side, I think Daniel's comment makes a lot of sense. In 2008, it started really declining, and that's when we, that's when I had the most settings to the kernel when it was the kind of first patch in November 2008. So we would have seen a pretty big drop off around then, for all of the two weeks I believe. All right, so let's see if we can pull it up. Um, but yeah, if you, if you go to this thing, there's actually all kinds of really, really awesome data here. Um, Summary. Alan uh, is amazing. We all know that, though. Um, yeah, so this actually shows sort of the contributor histogram, right? Um, the same kind of question. It doesn't have all of the data, but it has uh, a, a quick summary, right? So you see all time. You actually have a lot of other contributors kind of coming in and leaving over time. Um, and then in the last 12 months, um, it's, it's about actually close to half as many, which is pretty cool, right? Um, half of the all-time less frequent contributors from the la last year. So that means there's a lot of opportunity to be recruiting new people, and we could be succeeding at it, right, if, if we're sufficiently welcoming. Um, and then there's, there's Chris. <laughs> 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 That's right, the village of Chris Wilson. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, early Ajax, Chris, Peter, and Alan. <laughs> And then everybody else. <laughs> um, all time this is kind of interesting too, right? Alan again. Alan, Peter, Chris. Okay. Oh. Well, could it be just that the barrier to entry has increased, has it become more complex right. over time, so now it's much harder to get into the community and get into the code. Yeah, exactly. It happens sometimes, and that's just the core people who've been working with, they know it so well. And that's what, I mean, you see that in other projects. Yeah, definitely. I mean, certainly the, the modularization helped to some extent. I mean, I remember right away when it happened, people were really excited about being able to work on the drivers much more easily because uh, the drivers were finally their own separate thing instead of being this huge <laughs> reboot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly, I don't know if it's the code base at this point, but it, it could be a part of it. Um, but I think it's a lot of it has to do with the process as well, right, and making the process as easy as possible. Maybe um, 2007, 2008 was an anomaly because um, there was a lot of kind of frustration about X3 kind of being difficult to work with and. No, that was before that. What? Yeah, that was uh, like like three four years before that. 2009. I think it was 04, 05 ish. Yeah, but when did the modular modularization actually finish? Right. Um, 2006, but. 06. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the exact years, but 06 sounds like it, it, it started to be usable at uh, the beginning of 2006. Um, okay, so you think, I mean, I would have a hard time personally arguing that uh, the modularization was so exciting that it got a ton of people to stick around for two years. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of commits to clean things up. To um, yeah. There was also a lot of code removed. So you need less commits to maintain a smaller code base. Right. 
X server 1.13 is a lot smaller than 1.10. Right. Good. Um, and so just kind of looking at the past 30 days, just to see if there's any effects. So again, it's, it's like the same group of people every time, you know. So you can still see all time commits last year, last 30 days, it's, it's the same core. Um, so the core is pretty stable and it's, it's these external people who, you know, we really need to get new core contributors is the most important thing. And like, what's the process like to do that? So that was right, contributors per month. That's where we were. Um, so yeah, we were looking at this data set, contributors per month. I mean, even looking at the individual data points, it's a very, very obvious trend. There's not a lot of noise in that, um, and, it, and you know, it keeps going down. We need to figure something out. Um, so that was the code. Now let's go look at the community side of things and see if the two correlate. Um, so this is all the mailman archives. I grabbed both XORG and XORG develop because we split them apart. And it's just, it's complex to try and do analysis when there's a change in the middle. Um, but it turns out it, it's complicated when you combine it too, right? So the two lists combined, just lines of text per month, seeing how much people are talking on the lists um, and sending patches. So it's not just talk, it's all the patches that go there too. Um, so it's going pretty well, right? Things are growing ever since, like X3 was back here, things are growing, people are getting interested. The list gets split apart into Devel and XORG. And uh, I actually think what happened is that people sent, started sending a shitload more patches to the list once they were comfortable that it wasn't a list with a ton of users asking for support. Um, so it spiked way up. But then um, it started going down again. That's the same kind of trend. And. If you were not, because the patches are going to be Yeah, so I mean, there's less. less traffic on the list, um, you look at how many people are posting to the mailing lists, it's also shrinking, right? So everything that we're looking at is having this peak, you know, three to five years ago for the most part, and then gradually going downhill. Um, so, you know, I would argue that it's a pretty serious problem that we're not getting enough contributors and enough interest, and we need to figure out what we could do to increase that. Um, and then I did actually something that was pretty fun, which, have you guys heard of sentiment analysis before? So sentiment analysis is basically going through a bunch of text and um, looking for sort of positive and negative words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun with code comments, too. Um, so in this case, I grabbed all the IRC logs because I figured, all right, people are going to be much more free with their emotions on IRC. Um, ran some sentiment analysis across all of it and also wanted to look at the traffic on the IRC the same way as the mailing list and the code. I didn't have enough time to make a pretty graph, but you look at the sentiment, uh, the green down here is positive, the green and the stars, I'm sorry if any of you are red, green, colorblind. Uh, the blue is negative up, up here, and these are both on the right <laughs> axis, so this is a percent of, of words. And then the red is overall traffic. Um, and this is actually a much worse fit than the low is smooth, so um, don't expect the line to be as perfect, especially... Um, over here, what happens to the traffic is it's all over the place, and so this, this part of the is terrible. This user curve sucks. Um, so, you know, you just look at this very quickly, and you, what you can see is that, all right, there's a lot more negative words than positive words, <laughs> which is maybe not the best thing, right? Um, there's a lot of people being angry on IRC, which it, it's okay probably if it's venting about issues, <laughs> right? But it's probably not the best thing if it's... Uh, yelling at potential new people or even at each other playfully because the new people don't know that, right? They don't know whether it's playful. They don't know who you are. And so it's actually pretty important to, you know, basically uh, be polite on IRC because people are watching, right? And some of those people could be contributing to the code base. Um, and then, you know, the same thing here. If you look at the traffic, right? Downhill. All the time, downhill. So even the developer community, right, wherever you look, there's less traffic going on. There's less people talking about it. And um, you could argue that it's because they're being so much more productive that they're busy writing code instead of talking. Uh, but somehow, I, I just don't think that's the case, right? Because <laughs> otherwise, we would have seen patch traffic to the list going up, and we didn't. 
But so, you know, we've got more negative stuff than positive stuff. We've got downhill traffic in the, in the IRC. And, you know, frankly, like, we need to focus on, on getting the people. Yeah. Did you just have your hand up? No, he was. Okay. So, I mean, why don't we, yeah. You're right on time, because I was going to say, why don't we have a discussion about this? Oh, sorry. Um, have you looked at what, what happens when you include other X mailing list? Because after doing that, a lot of the discussions kind of move to more specific stuff, like mm -hmm. about GFX, about Intel stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in my, over the last few years, I think the Intel GFX IRC in general mm has -hmm. become much more busy, and mm -hmm. it's quite a nice way to play as a lot of newbies also ask questions. And sure. Stuff. You know, I, would, I don't have a log of that channel. I don't hang out in there. Um, yeah. But if you want to send me a log, I'll, I'll run it across there, and I'd love to see what happens. You know, I'd be super interested in, in both sort of comparing all the channels, if in you know maybe figuring out whether things are splitting up more, so that you know the the overall activity isn't going down, but in fact it's just going in different channels. Um, you know, I, I didn't have a chance to look at uh, the Mesa lists. Yeah, see what's going on there. The hmm? right level is pretty active. Yeah. It's filling up my. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, so is the railing. I mean, that, that's, that's a great thing. I was kind of surprised how quickly that community ramped up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. contributors now. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, the, ne the next things on my list to do with this are, are absolutely like looking at Wayland and then uh, also probably trying to check out some, some other channels like the Intel <coughs> Graphics. Or, um, I've, I've got the logs for the Mesa channel, but I didn't get around to running this stuff across it. So I've actually got four talks today, and I just got pretty busy dealing with that. Um, so, I mean, do you think this is a problem This is that's real? Have I convinced you, or are you skeptical? Correct. Well, is it a problem that X is getting contributors? Yeah. I tend to share your point of view, but on the other hand, I was surprised uh, in Nuremberg in September to see lots uh, of new people uh, compared to previous X conferences uh, in, two, mm -hmm. in Europe. So, probably X is more or less finished, the, uh, most of things are working well enough, and uh, it's not something that, attract, that needs a lot of you know, new work, except for uh, Systems other than Linux, but that's the next talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, it's done. It's, it's kind of like science in what was it, 1800, where somebody said we have learned all there is to learn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what do you think um, When you're talking about uh, Google Summer of Code and things like that, um, mm -hmm. it's Wayland or Mesa or the others, they get it at all? Um, it's, it's possible. Um, because maybe the, the answer would be to for Excel to become a front end for all exactly. these individual yep. projects. Exactly. It, it absolutely should be because Google prefers to minimize their administrative work, so they prefer umbrella style organizations that cover multiple groups. Um, so yeah, Xorg should absolutely, um, I guess, market itself more as an umbrella, right? Where it's like Wayland is the hot new stuff. We're going to help them out. We're going to do Mesa. Um, we're going to do you know kernel work on sort of fixing all of that, where there's, you know, three different code bases for doing graphics. Well, uh, about that, um, well, I'm not really doing GSOC anymore. We have the EVOC, yeah. which is the, yeah, it's all equivalent. Yep. But, um, yeah, the general consensus is that no one has the time to actually uh, work that much on the uh, GSOC. Do you feel like what the mentoring load is too hard? No, no. I, I mean, as a mentor, I think it's the same. But uh, maybe writing up the the projects and it's more. I mean, it's more administrative uh, with the GSOC, and the GSOC is only for the summer. Right. So we're I mean, more flexible, but at the same time, we lose the prestige of being the at the GSOC and GSOC. Exactly. So you, you get new people who may not have otherwise considered it. Um, and I think one of the things that's really nice about the summer of code is that it, uh, you have the opportunity to learn from a lot of different projects about how best practices basically are for recruiting new people who know nothing about what you're doing. Um, that's one of the places that I find it really beneficial is, is taking the lessons from the Summer of Code and then applying them to 
every opportunity to get new developers. Right, so, you know, for example, one of the things that's really nice about Summer Code is they make you put together a list of possible projects. Because there are people out there who say, I would love to work on this open source project, I just don't know what to do. Not everybody has an itch. They just have a desire to do something cool. Well, uh, based on experience, every time a developer came to us and said, oh, I would like to work on the project, but don't really know what I could do, well in the end it never really ended up well. I mean, only the stupid people like like me who actually wanted to have something, uh, to make something that is, I thought was simple, uh, but then years later we're not done yet. Um, that's the only core developers that actually stay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because they have a big project, right. like something very big. Right. Yeah, so I mean there's, there's absolutely the big project thing. Um, but I mean, if, you, if you're looking to get new core developers who maybe aren't yet professionally employed by Intel. Most new developers are students. So it's, it's good to think about what the on-ramp looks like for these people, right? Because they may be coming in saying, oh, well, I've got this little bug. Um, and, you know, on Bugzilla is actually an opportunity to recruit people, right? When they file a bug to try and say, well, why don't we try and work this out together? Instead yes. of you just saying, oh, here's my bug report, here's my log, go work that out. But instead, encouraging them to get as close to the code as possible. That's what I'm trying to do on Nubo. I'm trying to um, ask people to come as much as possible, but trust me, it's really hard. I mean, the problem, I don't think, is always us. It's, um, I mean, it's very difficult. It's a project that involves hardware, traffic kernel, user space. It's very broad, so you need to understand all of this uh, up front. And yeah. All right. Usually um, they I'm just going to unplug this while we keep talking. Usually the bug fixing is in a single spot. Oh, so you think, no. <laughs> No, no, actually. If, if whoever has given their talk next wants uh, to come oh, up, we can just keep talking. Oh, yeah, regression. Good. 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 Good.